I'm Virginia from Wright Clinic and here with me today is Dr. Alex Evans, who is a freelance medical writer and pharmacist. Thank you for joining us today, Alex. Yeah, thank you for having me. Great. So I'll ask the first question, which is what do you do and how did you get into it? Oh, well, like you mentioned, I am a freelance medical writer and I fell into it completely by accident. Probably like many people I, in pharmacy school, I had no idea medical writing was even a thing. I did one peer-reviewed paper my last year of pharmacy school, and of course you don't get paid for it. Um, did a couple more, so a total of three over a period of a few years, all peer-reviewed, never got paid for it. So I was never expecting to be paid to write. Um, I always thought CE and articles were written by faculty at pharmacy school. And anyway, when I was living in Hawaii, I pitched an article to Drug Topics, which is a um, U.S. publication for pharmacists, and they responded and offered me money. So I realized I was on to something. So, from yeah, from there, I kind of slowly built up my business, went part time as a pharmacist um, about six or eight months after really putting my head down and deciding I wanted to make a, a go of medical writing um, and then left that job last year. So now I'm, I'm full time with writing. That's amazing. So did that take about, um, I think it took about six or seven years for you to get away from being part-time pharmacist to um, being full-time uh, freelance medical writer. So how do you sustain yourself? What's your kind of technique for retaining clients so that you have that regular income? I think the big thing is really just following up meet, and you, you have to meet their expectations. So you need to give them a good draft. We can't have grammatical mistakes or things that are clearly out of line with their the style. So I'd say always look at previous things that they've published so you can nail the style, look at their guidelines if they have them, be responsive to editors, give them an excellent draft and meet their deadlines. Your goal is to make their job easy and to be pleasant to work with because then you'll be at the top of the list. I think Editors, like everybody else, once they find somebody they like, they don't want to go looking through another pile of resumes to find another person. They want to keep working with the same people. So you want to be that person. That's a really good tip. So being pleasant to work with and easy to work with to kind of retain them. So that's really insightful. I also wanted to ask you, what kind of challenges have you come across as a freelance medical writer and how have you overcome those? So what systems have you put in place or what do you do differently to make your life easier? Yeah, I mean, a few challenges. I, like every other freelancer, I have also had the feast or famine phases. So earlier this year was probably one of the biggest famines I've had in a while. For whatever reason, from January to maybe April or something, it's not that I wasn't getting any work but it was far less than i had been getting and there was no reason no reason why i mean after after that period was over then the same customers i'd been working with started contacting me again but but i just had that period so i think that's that's one challenge and also managing the mult working for multiple different companies and managing the emails and things like that it can be difficult to really take time off completely off um so that's that can be another challenge of being a freelancer um so i think it's really important to be sure to set boundaries with with yourself so even at at home you know e evening work and things like that just pick a time that you're going to cut it off and 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 turn it off and then step away from it and that helps you write better too when you come back fresh the next day but more importantly you you want to be able to actually enjoy the freedom that you have as a freelancer that's that's really insightful i was going to also ask how do you manage your work hours during the day so what what proportion of your work hours are you actually working on client materials and what proportion are you effectively managing your business where you're writing invoices, you're searching for new clients, or you're updating your website, your portfolio? Thankfully for me, I have, I've been lucky and haven't had to spend much as much time managing as actually writing the work. So probably 10% now of um, actually doing the invoicing and um, portfolio is relatively easy. I have a journal portfolio. If anybody's familiar with that, it makes it very easy to 
update portfolios. Um, but I will say my experience as a freelancer is when you first start out, you're going to spend 90% of your time looking for work and 10% doing it. And as you get more work and you get, it gets regular or you get a portfolio and you get things that you can show people, then that tide will start to turn where you can spend more of your time writing and less of your time trying to find work. And then when you have that portfolio, do you tend to go to your existing clients to increase your prices or do you tend to charge your new clients more? Most of the companies that I've worked with actually have set rates. So I would say that it hasn't been that often where I've even been able to set um, a price. And I will say with that as a freelancer, you just, either way, it's very, very important to be professional, but it's okay if the rate is too low. It's okay to turn down that work in a very professional way. Um, so I, I, I still think the majority even that I've been offered, they have a rate where I, there's not a lot of negotiation. There have been exceptions. Um, and then the other thing I will say with that is if let's say you're in a famine phase or it's a new kind of, of writing you've never done, that might take a lower rate. If it's one of those two things, it's possible. Um, if you take it, it's important that you give the same quality of work, that your quality of work should not be adjusted based on the person's, excuse me, the customer's, uh, the amount that they're paying you um, because ultimately you did accept that work and it, and it is your name and your reputation. And more importantly, I think more importantly than that, I think it, it's just really critical to be honest with them and, and do your best if you decided to take the work. Yeah, it's really important to emphasize that whatever work you do do, even if you're getting, you know, three pence per hour or a thousand dollars, that you are really consistent in the quality of work because you don't know, you know, when they'll come back to you or they might refer you to someone else who may offer you more or a similar uh, price or, or volume of work. Um, so that's really interesting to hear. And so what are your favorite things about freelancing now that you've been doing it for a while and, you know, you've completely switched career effectively? Yeah, I mean, I think my favorite thing is probably just the flexibility and freedom. I love the idea of it being project based rather than hourly based. So if I'm more efficient, if I can complete it faster, you name it in in whatever way, <laughs> then I can actually either work less hours or I can make more money, which just depends on what I want at the time. So um, so I love that flexibility. Your income is flexible and your time is flexible. And neither of those are usually the case with a regular job, certainly not with pharmacy. And I actually really, really enjoyed being a community pharmacist. Um, but I did kind of get tired of the, the shift based work, you know, you get the calendar just like any other shift based worker and you're there nine to six or in the U.S. often nine to nine or seven to nine, whatever crazy shifts they're working at some of the retail chains in the U.S. Um, and, and that's just it. No matter what you do, you will be there for that, at least that period of time, if not, if not later. Yeah, I agree. Definitely flexibility and kind of having the, you know, options to choose how much you work and who you want to work for are really big benefits. So what's next on the horizon for you? Um, well, I have a brand new course out and it is to help medical writers get caught up on artificial intelligence. So this course is completely designed around AI and medical writing. Um, I know there's it for many medical writers, it might be a, a uh, kind of touchy subject or a subject of like, that brings up a lot of debate. We'll say that. Um, but I do think there yeah. is a ton of potential with medical writers, excuse me, with AI writers. I've seen excellent drafts. I have a lecture in there where I intentionally try to confuse the AI writer. I think I told it to tell me about the use of Stratera, <laughs> which uh, is brand name in the U.S. for typically for ADHD. ADHD. Um, the, tell me about the use of Stratera in colon cancer. So I was trying to totally confuse it. And it actually responded and said, no, it's not, it's not for colon cancer, uh, more or less. So even when I intentionally <laughs> used it, um, it was accurate. So I think, I think the accuracy, the style is getting better and better. It will continue to get better. And I think it is a critical tool that medical writers 
can and should learn to use. And so this course is intended to help medical writers get caught up on that. Amazing. Thank you so much for developing that course. And I'll leave links in the description below so you can check it out and also connect with Alex on LinkedIn as well. So that wraps up this episode. Thank you so much, Alex, for yeah, coming and sharing all of your words of wisdom. And we will catch up soon. Yeah. A pleasure. Bye. Bye.